hello. God bless you. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here. And I pray that you're having a wonderful day. And yes, today I'm in the sanctuary, different location. And but but listen, with the same message, the same thrust and the same admonitions, for we are living in a day that is both great and crazy. You know, uh, the book, The Tale of Two Cities says that we're living uh, in the best of times and in the worst of times. And we're living in a day, my friends, where we just see things going on that shows that there's a price for a society to pay. There's a dear price, I might add, for a society to pay for disobeying and disregarding the word of God. I mean, it's just simple. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah, chapter number four, Five and verse 20, and I've talked about this over and over and over, nothing new, but the sin, the sin's not new either, and I want to make sure I keep you reminded so you will join me and others as we stand against the wickedness that is per so pervasive in our society. It seems as though it is ubiquitous. It seems as though it is everywhere. But who's actually everywhere is the God of the Bible and uh, his word stands. Isaiah chapter number five, verse 20 says, woe be unto them. Woe unto them that call evil good and uh, and good evil that put darkness for light and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. God says, woe, that is, there's an impending doom. Problems are going to arise to all who put light for darkness, sweet for bitter, bitter for sweet, darkness for light, who take morals and turn them upside down. And, we'll, and we live in a topsy-turvy world where, where good sense now is treated like you're crazy and crazy is treated like we have good sense. Thank God we have the word of God. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 45 and verse 9, Woe unto him, woe unto him that strive with his maker. People are arguing, Brother Gary, with God. The whole transgender movement, yes, I'm talking about it. The whole movement is basically an argument with God. And those who support this, you are guilty of uh, Isaiah 5 and 20. And those who participated in it, you are guilty of uh, Isaiah 45 and 9. You can't change yourself. And we've got all kinds of problems going on. Here in my state, a farmer, a former NC State swimmer, and 15 others are suing the vaunted uh, holier-than-thou NCAA, saying transgender policies made locker rooms uncomfortable. Look at this. Now, uh, this is a WRAL reporter. A former North Carolina State University swimmer is one of 16 uh, athletes suing the NCAA for allowing transgender athletes to compete and share the same locker rooms. Basically, what's going on, and you know, transgender nothing. This is a guy pretending to be a girl. Uh, or a girl pretending to be a guy. Well, in the world of sports, we don't have problems with girls pretending to be guys so that they can compete with guys. Have you noticed that? We don't have that problem because uh, that, uh, that, that that girl knows she don't stand a chance. But it, it's a disgrace that these guys who can't compete with other fellas, these guys who, when competing with other fellas, are uh, probably ranked uh, in the top... Uh, 1,000, and they're probably ranked uh, uh, in terms of the lowest, 999 in the 999th uh, place, then all of a sudden, he's a girl, and he's allowed to compete with women. He violates the sacred, the, that, that sacred private locker room where whether you are a male athlete or a female athlete, if you participated in sports, you know how important 
uh, and how uh, how important the privacy of a locker room is. You know that really the teams are made and built, and the and and the, the glue takes place uh, in the locker room be- before practice and after practice. When you at, before and after the game, and uh, you, the, the teams cry together, uh, teams rejoice together, teams shower together, and uh, you don't want to be uh, in a locker room uh, if you're a, a guy w- with 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 a girl in there. Well, I don't know. Well, maybe some guys would go for that, but you most certainly don't want to be a female, uh, uh, somebody's daughter, and uh, all of a sudden they're in the locker room with a fella, and uh, uh, he's a guy. He's a guy. I don't. I don't even go by that trans woman stuff. That this is a guy, and the guy is in the locker room with women, and many of these guys are doing this, and uh, and all of a sudden the guy uh, gets aroused in the locker room with women. He can't hide it. Uh, that, that that tells me right there something's going on. Something's going on unless the guy has gone through. Uh, the transgender, whatever, and now he is trying to be a lesbian. Gary, it doesn't get any crazier than that. This is what we're going dealing with in society today. The class action lawsuit says that the NCAA's actions and policies for transgender eligibility cause emotional stress, to say the least. Much of the lawsuit focuses on the 2022 NCAA Swimming and Diving Championships. And you know all about that. Leah Thomas, uh, a transgender, basically, brother William. Good old Bill Thomas, a transgender athlete, competed in the women's, uh, competed in the championship on a on the women's 500 meter freestyle, defeating an uh, Olympic silver medalist. The guy outswam a girl. And the thing that gets me is <laughs> he stands there proud of his medal. And there are other people who think, well, there's nothing wrong with this. Oh, my. Let me tell you, my friends, it's time as never before for society to turn back to this grand old book, to turn back to the word of God, because wickedness is taking place in our land. But I'm here to tell you that that's not the only thing that's going on. God is moving by his spirit. (laughs) People are getting saved. People are getting delivered. People are coming out of sin. I have literally heard from believers all over this country in and out of the United States of America who is sending in emails and, and, and texts and phone calls saying Bishop Wooden keep preaching the truth. Keep standing on the word of God. We love the Bible. We love God's truth. So, let me tell you, make no mistake about it. We are not outnumbered. God has never left himself without a remnant. There's always, there will always preachers be a market for God's truth. And I want to encourage you to preach it, teach it, more importantly, live it and proclaim it. And I'll tell you, when the gospel is preached, taught, lived, proclaimed, when the gospel is, is explained, when the gospel is laid out, The gospel changes hearts. The gospel changes minds. The gospel delivers. The gospel is as power packed today as it was when Jesus began to walk uh, the dusty streets and hills of Palestine, declaring repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. John the Baptist preached the same message and we're saying to you today the same things. Repent. Come to Jesus. Give him your heart. You'll never regret it. I gave him my heart 46 years ago. And uh, I tell you, I, I thank God for every day that I have had the privilege of serving the God of the Bible. You are looking at one human being here, one man who is glad to be born again. Oh, I love it. I love it. Walking with Jesus, talking to him at the end of the day, talking to him throughout the day, starting my morning with a conversation with him and then allowing him to talk to me. And he speaks to me. He speaks to my heart. He speaks to my mind. He speaks to me through the word of God. And by the way, so I'll know that it's him. 
If anything comes to my heart and mind that doesn't line up with his word, I don't accept it. That's how, that's, that's how you know it's from the Lord. God will never contradict the Bible. The Lord will never go against his own word. Amen. Amen. Now, speaking of his word, tonight is going to be awesome. Right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. It's going to be different tonight. We're in the midst of our the, the, the New Horizon District meeting. My superintendent is Superintendent William H. Cooper II. Yeah, you know Cooper, the, 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 the uh, author and the, the leader in the armor bearer movement. You know William Cooper. William Cooper served as my first assistant for years here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. And what a tremendous man of God he is. And now, Brother William Cooper, who was uh, my first assistant, he was uh, uh, who served here at the church uh, over my pastor's aid, writer of, of multiple, at least three volumes of The Last Day Armor Bearers. I invite you to Google him, look him up. Pastors, you want this man's ministry in your church. There are many pastors who are living better today as a result of the work of uh, Superintendent William H. Cooper II. Well, he's now the superintendent of the district that the Upper Room Church of God in Christ is a part of. And tonight we're having our district meeting here. And guess what? Yours truly will be preaching the word of God tonight and I'm excited about what God has given me to preach. We have a theme uh, uh, this uh, this uh, year for the uh, for our district. It is uh, serving the Lord only, exclusive and not inclusive. Now that is some theme. And God has given me something to say, and I can hardly wait to share it with you tonight, right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. So I'm going to wrap this up because we've got some things that we want to share. And I want you to come. I want you to come. I want you to come. The district will be here. The district leaders will be here. The district pastors will be here. Our district missionary, my lovely wife, Pamela, she's going to be here. Of course, our supervisor, Mother Beverly DeJanae, you know she will be here. District missionary, Margaret Moles, the pastors of our great district, they're coming from uh, near and far to share in this service. And we're going to have church. And I'm going to teach and, and, and preach the word of the Lord tonight. And I want you to join me because listen, no matter what's going on, if the Lord is allowing me to speak, the one thing that you know that will be the dominant part of my message is Bible study. <laughs> That's right. I know it's the district meeting, but you know what? We need to study this thing. We need to know what it says. We need to understand it. We need to walk it, talk it, eat, sleep, and breathe the word of God. So tonight I'm preaching the word of God. Make sure if you tune in and you can't get here, sit there with your Bible handy. You want to follow me. You want to follow me. And those who are coming, bring your Bibles as you do always. And we're going to have church right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. I will see you tonight and enjoy the remainder of your day. Thanks for watching.